your mana to play more powerful cards. And crucially, Fabian has four mana copies of Drill Pit. So uh, if Corey is uh, pinning all of his hopes on maybe a Urian as his big mid-game play or, or some other card to keep pace with the aggro stars, that Drill Pit uh, could be a big trouble for him. Yeah, and you know, I actually really, really like Corey's opening hand here. We see Glass Casket as well as Kaya or Shav Usurper. Those are both going to play a big role in keeping Corey in this game. This is the good half of that uh, Oz of Yorian deck uh, in this matchup, uh, for sure. And Fabian's hand is uh, is pretty good itself. He has turn one out of the Ebon Legion. Uh, he'll be able to follow that up with Fervent Champion and Draw Pit. And the issue with this Mardu Knight deck, a lot of the time is the mana, where even though you have 12 Shock Clans and Tournament Grounds, sometimes you just can't cast all of your spells or you can't sequence them in the way that you might ideally like to. Uh, and that can really slow you down enough for the opponent to get back in the game. Uh, but with this start so far, it looks like he has most of what he needs. He still does need a second red for that Embercleave, but he has a turn or two to find that. Yeah, absolutely. This is a spot where it's basically going to come down to whether or not Fabian can actually kind of assemble this one-two combo while Corey's still trying to set up what he wants to get onto the battlefield. And we, we see the draw, but they're taking a look at Corey's hand and... There are, he'll be sad to see, there are several good candidates for him to take it. This isn't an automatic choice. Yeah, it's really close. Going for the Kaya over the Glass Casket is effectively acknowledging that no matter what, those are both removal spells, but Kaya's going to get multiple cards, whereas Casket's only going to get one. And we see the Fen Lurker eats the Embercleave that uh, Fabian cannot cast yet, leaves him both that third land and the Rotting Registaur. And the, the fact that this deck hinges quite heavily on Registor when it does need to raise means that it's built in such a way where you can function with quite few cards. You don't need to have a full uh, a full grip. You're looking to get on the battlefield as fast as you can. So these effects like Yarrick's Fernlurk are not as good as they would be against maybe a growth style deck that's looking to hit its first five or six land drops and then do things from there. Exactly. So we're coming in for some damage, and Knight of the Ebon Legion will get another counter, and there is the Mighty Burglar Rat making its first uh, appearance here on the broadcast. Look, it's just out here doing its best. And Doom Foretold will eat the Knight of the Ebon Legion, and we, we see that Corey's deck is built in such a way where he has these uh, disposable permanents, like the Fen Lurker, like the Burglar Rat, which you're perfectly happy to sacrifice to the Doom Foretold. By the time you're doing that, they have already done their job. And now you reach this scary portion of the game if you're in Fabian's seat, where if you cast spells, you just lose them. And if you pass the turn, you skip your turn. Yeah, uh, and we see there, uh, Corey takes the, the first game very quickly. Fabian, out of resources, uh, in, he knows that the game is uh, not getting much better from him from there. And so we will uh, already be moving over to sideboarding here. Right, and that's just a spot where Fabian saw the writing on the wall and... Especially when you're playing in a tournament like this, you know it's going to be long. You have the whole Swiss. You have the top eight. If you're going to succeed, you want to make sure you kind of just take your losses in a spot where they're going to hit you less hard. And especially with open deck lists, there's no consideration of, I'll play on for a few turns to see what my opponent has in their deck. It's right there in front of you. You have that, that convenience and you can uh, do with that information what you like. Exactly. Sometimes you don't need to play for that 1% if you just want to get breakfast. Absolutely. I respect it. So lo looking at the, the sideboarding here, what jumps out to you about uh, both Corey's sideboard and Fabian's sideboard? So the big thing in Corey's sideboard that I really like, and you see him immediately shoving those into the deck, are those copies of Kaya's Wrath. Those are the things that allow Corey to actually get a plus two, a plus three in terms of card advantage and catch up on the battlefield all in a single card. Is there any consideration to bring in his own running red resource, which are not earmarked for this matchup, but those are consistently the biggest threat on the board. That's the entire point. And so if you play that on turn three, often that will brick wall your opponent's entire uh, offense. The big issue is that if Fabian just doesn't attack into it, it will eat up Corey's own resources out of his own hand, and it will very rarely be unable or be able to attack Fabian until the game is already locked up. So I, I'm not surprised to see it stay in the sideboard here. Oh, and this looks like a very impressive hand for uh, Fabian. The, the double Fervent Champion draw, which is often the scariest thing you can see out of the Mardu Knight deck with the Embercleave as this uh, mid-game finisher. But then on, on Corey's side, he has that curve of Glass Casket into Oath of Kaya. And 
I'm a little surprised to see Treacherous Blessing still in his deck. You know, the uh, he doesn't have the time necessarily to leverage those cards, and the life loss is is a big deal. But again, when you have 80 cards in your main deck, you don't have that many good things to bring out all of the time. Right, and a big point here with Treacherous Blessing is yeah. it's a good way to refuel once you've traded a bit. And if one Treacherous Blessing is good, I don't know how good the second one is. Uh, but uh, we will see the second Fervian Chapman, I imagine, come down in short order, uses this opportunity to get that tapped uh, Survive Triome into play, uh, fixing his mana for the future turns, and four damage will, will crunch in, putting Cory to 15. Love a good pair of Goblin Guides. Absolutely. And so I have to think one of those is uh, getting trapped in a glass casket. At this point, you kind of have to assume that's the case. Corey ideally wants to save Glass Casket for something like Rotting Regisaur, but he's just under so much pressure here, especially on the draw. You can't just sit on your hands forever. And under the old companion rule, if Corey could get to turn five and immediately play his Yorion to, let's say, blink that Oath of Kaya, maybe there would be some con consideration to saving it. But now, when you have to take a full turn off and spend three mana to get the Yorion in your hand, I don't know if that's tenable anymore. Exactly. At this point, you're really just trying to bridge the gap towards those later turns of the game. And we can see Corey kind of making moves here to just conserve life and let things work themselves out as the game naturally progresses. And we see uh, Fabian passes with two mana up, uh, able to play that Black Lance Paragon end of turn. And the Paragon gives the Mardu Knight's like, uh, an element of instant speed play, which it doesn't really have otherwise. Normally, it's just under its hand as fast as possible in its main phase, getting all of its threats onto the battlefield. Uh, but if your opponent passes with two mana up, maybe it's a Paragon, maybe it's just a weak hand, or maybe it's something like a Heartless Act. Right, and this is a position where you see Corey kind of weighing if he wanted to cast that Oath of Kaya or not, but really, he's just trying to bridge to that late game. He needs to get things off the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And we see Fabian cycling uh, the, the second Triumph here. And, and this is an issue that the Mardu Knight deck can have sometimes, where it doesn't have a way to refill itself. It doesn't have one of those aggressive curve toppers like an Experimental Frenzy or a Planeswalker that can generate this mid-game advantage. So it essentially has to commit to all-out aggression and hope that that is enough to finish a job. And if it isn't, then you get into these spots like this where you have a bunch of lands and maybe one or two creatures left which aren't looking that impressive. And you have to hope to seal the, gla to seal the game with something like the Embercleave that we see in Fabian's hand. Well, with all those lands, it really doesn't take that much for Embercleave to just put the game out from this point. Right, and Corey has four cards in hand, but two of those are Treacherous Blessings, which are really not what the Doctor ordered her. Right, we and you know, Kaya isn't doing that much more either in the face of a two-mana 3-1. So this might be a good chance to just get that Yorin into your hand. Yeah, this seems like a position where you just need to do something along those lines, or else you're just never going to have a line that actually gets you out of this. He could also pass and uh, maybe with the aim of uh, doing something like activating a castle next turn or whatever, but I think that's just too small ball. I think getting the Yorian now, and you, he's essentially putting the gauntlet down to Fabian, saying, okay, you need an impressive play right now, or this Yorian can threaten to end the game. Right, and you can see Fabian saying, all right, it's now or never. Let's Ember cleave this up. Let's just push through any damage that I can get in. Oh, and that is a clutch Elspeth Conquer's death. Uh, from uh from cory taking care of that uh uh Embercleave permanently if he wants but for now he doesn't even need to do that because there is one threat on the board and the oath of kai will remove it so unless there is a haste threat which can only really be fervent champion uh cory knows he's in the clear he'll have a turn to breathe and then remove the Embercleave next turn right this is a position where cory has got to feel good about his position especially as a four or five And Corey knows when the draw bit took his D-Spark, he knows that there's an Embercleave coming. That can only really mean one thing. And so uh, he'll be sequencing uh, his plays accordingly there. Right. And this is a position where Fabian's really doing his best to try and sequence around what he can. But it feels like Corey's found what he needed to find in just blinking this Oath of Kaya over and over. And we do see Elspeth Conquer's death. Takes down the Emmercleave, leaves uh, Fabian with three creatures in play, but none of them can attack profitably into that Yorion. Right, something like a Lord off the top or an Embercleave or what he needs to find here. It, that is a Lord off the top, so uh, that will make things a little more interesting. And, Honestly, this is getting close. Yeah, and, and Fabian knows that there's no point sitting back. He's fine losing a creature at this point just to get a few damage in. 
Right, and you know, we see five damage coming across here, and having to block a venerable knight, which is just going to make things a little bit worse on the battlefield. And, and Cory is down to four here, so he would love a land, which would let him eat the Fervian Champion with the Kaya, and also mortify something else, but instead he draws a Doom Foretold, which oh. is great if the board is at parity, or if both players have, have a bunch of things. In this position, it's really not what you're looking for. Yeah, no, really, Corey needs to be able to get something together that can actually just catch him up on this battlefield. As it stands, he's pretty close to just facing lethal. Just one good card off Fabian's library here is going to put us into a game three. Yeah, the, the prognosis might seem good for Corey right now, but there are lots of cards Fabian can draw that, that, that do change that and end the game on the spot. And it feels like Corey's just going to lean into this Mortify here to try and get something at instant speed. This also and represents a castle activation, so it's hard to play around if you're on Fabian's side. Yeah, the fact that Corey is buzzing here doesn't actually tell you all that much in the end. Uh, and Fabian, I think, needed something good on this turn. Instead, just draws a sick land, which is uh, not doing much for him here. Dang. See, really, it's just kind of backwards, right? Corey wanted a sixth land. Fabian wanted anything, but it really is just a cruel world for both players here. Yeah, if only Fabian could donate that blood crypt over to Corey. And uh, <laughs> so we'll see the three creatures come in. And yeah, Fabian knows he, he has to do this. There's, there's no other choice here. Corey just accepting that he's going to have to fire off this Mortify, and if the opponent has a copy of Invercleave, that may just be it. With that in mind, would you maybe uh, block something else of the Orient and then Embercleave the, uh, the Shieldbreaker? I'm sorry? Well, Corey... Well, Corey's a three, and there is a sick land to turn too late, but... Uh... Elspeth Conquistair, sadly, does not get to return anything here, but Kaya will eat the one remaining creature uh, on the battlefield, or just gain Cory to life, given that currently the Fervent Champion is a 1 1 that poses no immediate threat. Right. This is a position where Cory just wants to try and get a little bit of padding to his life total, especially with this Yurion in play. There's no single card that Fabian can rip off the top that will slam the door shut. And he even feels safe enough to play that Treacherous Blessing, uh, which uh, it lives up to the name sometimes. And with Corey at five life, that is somewhat perilous, but uh, he he feels he has a, the room to do it here. All right. No, you know, actually, I think it's time for Doom Foretold to make an appearance. Yeah. It's possible Oath of Kaya comes down just to maybe give a little bit more of a life buffer, but Corey has so many cards, so many resources, and now so many lands that it kind of, it just feels like the world's his oyster. Yeah, Doom Foretold will eat the one remaining creature if he wants to, or he can just play uh, a redundant Oath of Kaya, take out the Paragon, go up to seven, and uh, pat his life total even further. We, uh, yeah, he he does get to play the Doom Foretold, gets to have it all. Kaya's are actually a really good way to offset this treacherous blessing here. That Embercleave and, coming a turn too late for Fabian. Yeah, and uh, and that's going to do it. So, yeah, kind of unreal. That felt a lot closer than it actually looked at the end. I know it was ultimately a 2-0 victory for Co Corey Baumeister, but it felt like Fabian was one or two cards away off the top that whole time. Remember, he got Corey down to being one creature, one Embercleave, a couple points of damage, etc., short of actually sending us to a game